The definition of an anecdote is a short or amusing story about an incident or person. Anecdotal evidence is defined as an account that is regarded as unreliable or hearsay. When an anecdote is used as a form of evidence, even if you understand that it is anecdotal evidence, you need to call that shit out as soon as humanly possible. They say these UCLA protesters are burning down buildings, but they don't name the buildings that have been burned down. They don't show footage of any burning buildings, they just say buildings being burned down. If you're participating in burning buildings and attacking officers, and, and usually during a lot of mass protest incidents, they can find at least one crazy person, or not even a crazy person, just somebody that gets provoked into an attack before somebody else hits record. In a peaceful protest, one random homeless guy just jumping in on everything, hurls a rock through a bakery window. Oh, it's too much, you guys are destroying private property, you're attacking people who have nothing to do with this. Savage rioter! Oh, look at that! You just played by their rules that they themselves do not follow. They don't even have that. They can't even selectively edit their way into manipulating you. If you're actually buying into what's being told to you through network television right now, you are truly gullible. I don't know if you know a lot of logical fallacies. I don't even know if you know what a logical fallacy is. You're that susceptible to being manipulated by logical fallacies. You're being fed straw man of people whose side you are not even hearing out. If every news outlet is feeding you the same story. That story still requires proof. For some students about to get an education they maybe didn't bargain for when the protest began, listen, for example, to this warning by ExxonMobil CEO Darren Woods when he was asked if the turmoil on these campuses will actually impact who his company even hires. What we're seeing on campuses today in some places is something very different from that, uh, harassment and intimidation. I think there's no place for that frankly, at those universities and certainly no place for that in a company like ExxonMobil. So we wouldn't look to bring folks like that into our company. And, and if that action or those protests reflect the values of the campuses where they're doing it, we wouldn't be interested in recruiting uh, students from those campuses. I'm sure that this guy is going to be heartbroken to find out that Exxon Oil doesn't want to hire him. The CEO of an executive search firm tells The Post, quote, I'm hearing from people they don't want to send their kids to these places, but also from the banks that they're leery about recruiting now from these highly visible schools and will look to places maybe in the Midwest where you don't see this type of activity. You don't see that type of activity in the Midwest because you don't see any activity in the Midwest. What you got? Fucking Wyoming? The best thing you got is Las Vegas. I don't think they're known for their college education. I know it exists, but if you're not in Las Vegas, you're still in Nevada. I love how they had to say the Midwest and not the Southeast. Something is still deterring companies from looking over... Joining me now, Shark Tank judge Kevin O'Leary is also the chairman of O'Leary Ventures. Good to see you, Kevin. A long-time businessman. Would an involvement in protest like these, for example, would it deter you from hiring some young adults from any of these schools? What I don't think we are talking enough about is a tragedy occurring at the individual level right now. When these protests occurred in the past, and by the way, there have been student protests since America was formed, and we allow free speech, and protests have been part of it, and you think about the 60s and the 70s, Vietnam War, and none of which were drowning in corporate support. Not until what they were working toward had already been achieved, and then said community in question earned enough rights to become a marketing demographic. Then, the idea of participating in any of these large events, these mass gatherings, suddenly wasn't so criminal anymore because the social standard was moving in a direction in which acting like it is still criminal is career suicide. But you're talking like you already know that part, though. All of the protests that have occurred, most of those were shot on 16 millimeter film. Majority, 80, 90 percent of that was high grainy. You can't really get any resolution. But unfortunately, for these participants in the last few weeks, that's not the case. Let me explain it. It's being shot on 1080p and 4K video and from surveillance cameras with extremely high resolution in low light conditions, including retinal scanning. This is what's happened with AI. So if you're burning down something or taking a flag down or fighting with police, I'm sorry. You're trashing your personal brand. I think you mean to imply that if there were 1080 and 4K quality cameras back then during a civil rights period, you would be gleefully rejecting any and all participants in said marches. There's so many ways you could go about that. They were mad what was happening to them on a local level. These young little shits have the internet, and I'm less capable of doing shady shit and outsourcing to the employees that'll work for like a nickel an hour. 
work. And let me explain how this works. When I'm hiring somebody, and I'm not different than any other corporation, you just heard from S&P 500 CEOs, we do what's called a deep, dark search. A deep, dark search. If you're a candidate in the executive element of a company or any candidate of, the, of materiality, you do this. You look at their resume and you say, let's hire a firm. It's about $4,800 per search and go deep web, go dark web. All of this imagery that you're seeing tonight, all this unedited film is going to be there in about two weeks. So if you're out there right now, even in the dark, with no sunglasses on, even though you've got a mask on, I'll see your eyes at 4K resolution. I know who you are. Bro thinks he's in a Bond movie. Realistically, what are you going to do? You're going to be like, computer enhanced? You're going to catch what my retinas look like? There's three ways this affects you. Let's take the Google situation. You broke company policy, you got fired, you can sue Google. Good luck with that. You're not hireable anymore. You're referring sorry, to those yeah, who engaged really in that, in that essentially of, um, employees yeah. from Google. I mean, who, there were dozens, I should tell you about, there were dozens who were fired or placed on administrative leave because they were participating in employee sit-ins inside of some of the offices last month and they had filed a complaint arguing that, um, they had protected speech and that they were unlawfully fired. Go ahead. It's fine. You can litigate till the cows come home. You're not going to get hired again. You have to understand you have an employment contract and you breached it. That's number one. Number two, you broke the law. What law? Name names. Who are the people that are breaking these laws? You have footage of the protest that is going on playing right next to you. During this whole conversation, you're showing the audience the protest in question. I've yet to see a single crime being committed by these people who are trying to convince us are committing crimes. Like we're supposed to just take you on your word for that. Why? Because you have money? In college, you have passion. I think it's great. But you got to think about your future when you're starting a family. Today, all of these people, tens of thousands of them, won't know why they didn't get that job. Oh, I understand that you're feeling a lot of passion. You believe the things that you do because you're dumb and in your 20s. You'll come around to thinking my way. You'll stop being dumb and in your 20s someday. But actually, you don't even care about that anymore. I understand the passion. However, all oh. get fucked. I'm really sorry for them. And I teach at colleges and universities. And I tell these young students, we're in a new era of AI. Fruits that end with um. Applum, bananum, tomatum, and coconut. How long ago was 1919? 1919 was 20 years ago. Yeah, it even provides the Wikipedia sourcing. Yeah, good. It's nice. Well, when the AI sources uh, the facts that it provides for me. Good job, AI. Is it okay to leave a dog in a hot car? No. Yes. It's always, it's always, <laughs> it's, it always do it. To leave a dog in a hot car. They love it. We're in a new era of AI opinion of it is, I mean, I know you're feeling sorry for them, but might that translate to no? Okay, I'm not talking to people who have committed heinous acts and and, and the things, but there has been even a push for people who are returning citizens who have, have had felonies, and there was a push under the Obama administration not to have to check a box every time you were trying to return to society, having been promised an opportunity once rehabilitation occurs and all those different deterrence and, and punishment that something will consistently hang over your head for the rest of your life. Might the sorrow you feel translate to a second opportunity? to go beyond what has taken place in the last 48 hours or weeks. Life is hard, then you die. And I urge young people today to understand the world they live in. Again, with all of this crap, I'm not saying that we should make it illegal for you to go out and protest. I'm just saying, on behalf of all corporations ever, going out and exercising that right to protest means we're going to use the dark web to memorize what your retinas look like and you will never have a job again because you exercised your right to protest. So I'm not saying it should be illegal. I'm just saying it should be completely disincentivized and you should be afraid of losing your career because based on my anecdotal perspective, you broke the law because you were there. The fact that you participated in this at all can be used as a reason to not hire you. A private company is completely within their right to do that. It begs the question like, how many corporations are you actually speaking on behalf of because I think this is just a Trump-supporting venture capitalist who is claiming to speak on behalf of this entire demographic. You can't do that when you're a Trump supporter. You're a Trump supporter. You are the taboo. Not a good taboo, okay? Just taboo. You are not the majority of anything. I can go into a grocery store wearing a piece of clothing that says, fuck Donald Trump. I don't think I'm gonna get that many nasty looks, and any nasty looks that I do catch, it's not gonna come from the most approachable people. Meanwhile, as many Trump supporters as there are, I don't see that many Trump supporters wearing their MAGA hats inside of Kroger, inside of Walmart. They might record 
record themselves and go up onto the internet or go on to network news. But even while Biden's own voters are calling him Genocide Joe, I still don't think I'm going to catch nearly as much shit wearing a piece of Biden wear, not that I have any, than you would for being openly a Trump supporter. So whatever other demographic you want to claim to be speaking on behalf of, people don't have any reason to trust there's any validity to that. Because the moment they know that you are a Trump supporting person, we know that that's coming from a Trump supporting perspective, a theocratic perspective. Notice that this is when they start talking about protesting, the fact that you want to go protest. That in and of itself is being described like it is a crime, like it is an illegal offense. You see Kevin getting all smarmy about it. Oh, I'm sad for them. When confronted with the question, I've been recorded, whether I want to or not, my entire life. I've been able to express myself online since I was a teenager. So the fact that I got this much following me and you don't have shit following you, what's up with that? And just smirks it off like, ah, tough time to just go be homeless. All that money you spent on college, all of the student loan debt that you went into, all of the time that you spent getting a degree, it all means nothing now because of this one little thing that I disapprove of and I should be the gatekeeper on who is hireable in that sense. That is like why you have no future and you'll never get a job again. It's because all of these people, tens of hundreds of thousands of people that came out, they identified as anti-war, not conflating an entire nationality of people with a terrorist organization and then smugly looking at you with fake confusion when Whenever you try to differentiate the two, then scoffing at you once they inevitably get called racist for being racist. Otherwise, there would be nobody saying pro-Hamas event, pro-Hamas protesters, dog whistle. Your YouTube feed is probably flooded with the most toxic shit. Doesn't even believe in rehabilitation. Forget that he thinks that the court system is somehow fair while simultaneously being on the side of somebody who who is claiming that the election was stolen from him and that the courts in Trump's case are rigged against him, but only on that occasion. But at all other times, they are fair, and anybody who is a convicted felon who served their time still should not be able to find work, go homeless, and die. Forget all of that, because there's still an implication that any of these people have committed a felony. There's no felony being committed. You can't just say criminals and looters and rioters. Nothing is being looted. You don't even have footage that looks like somebody looting shit. You don't even have footage that looks like a felony is being committed that you can selectively edit ClipChimp and sell to me as a semi-convincing lie. You don't even have that. You're just trying to pull anecdotes out of your asshole, calling it a source and expecting people to just go with it and having some rich dude from the fucking Shark Tank come on to say, and if you don't just go with it, you might not be hireable anymore. Really? Anecdotal evidence is not evidence. 